Well, damn it if the misogyny isn't just flying at me from every direction this week. So we're going to start our international tour of sexism in the UK this week, where a 44-year-old mother of three was just sentenced to spend over a year in prison for having an abortion. You see, she was between 32 and 34 weeks pregnant, and according to UK laws, abortions are only legal up to 24 weeks. And after 10 weeks, they have to be carried out in a clinic. But during COVID lockdowns, a lot of restrictions were relaxed. So when Carla Foster found herself moving back in with an estranged partner while pregnant with another dude's kid, she got an abortion pill via telemedicine. But her bodily autonomy had crossed some arbitrary line. So it suddenly belonged to the state. And now she's going to jail. See, apparently when the UK wants to know how to handle abortion law, they look to the same place the Supreme Court looks, 1861. Abortion was legalized there back in the 60s, but only to a point. And after that, this 160-year-old law takes over and means a woman could theoretically be, quoting from the law here, quote, kept in penal servitude for life, end quote. In Foster's case, she's getting a 14-month sentence in prison and another 14 in home confinement for deciding not to bring a child into a volatile situation during an indefinite period of national lockdown. So quick thanks to Nick for sending us that one at scathingnews at gmail.com. And thanks to Andre for sending me this next one out of Poland. Now, this one is hard to confirm, and I can't get a hell of a lot of English language detail here. But apparently the story goes like this. Catholic priest in a small village is raping kids. The kids turn to the headmistress of their school. She goes to the police. And then the parents turn on the headmistress, accuse her and their own kids of lying, and run her the fuck out of town. And I mean like running to her car while people are leap on top of it and scream threats at her levels of run her out of town, from what I can find. Anyway, just a quick reminder of the fucked up web you have to weave when your entire worldview is based on some asshole being right about something he's wrong about. But I need to wrap things up this week back here in the good old U.S. of A with a quick nod to Scott for sending us in this story, I have to give you the latest update on the Southern Baptist Convention's war against the slightest modicum of progress. See, the SBC met this week to discuss all the important issues facing their congregations, like their failure to address charges of sexual abuse cover-up and their declining and rapidly aging membership. I'm just kidding. They spent the whole time complaining about women pastors. See, starting earlier this year, the SBC started booting churches that allowed female pastors. Needless to say, that didn't involve a hell of a lot of booting, but it did include the Saddleback Church, a massive and pretty well-known megachurch. And to be clear, Saddleback's policy, the one deemed too progressive by the SBC, is that it's okay for women to be pastors as long as there is a man in charge of them. That's actually their policy. But that's too woke, so Saddleback is out. And now they're at a stupid convention about stupidity, arguing whether or not the ghost magic counts if there's no penis involved. So, yeah, sad to keep losing fights to people that spend their time arguing about shit like this. But it's nice to be reminded how publicly they advertise their weaknesses. So on that note, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah and Heath. 